In this session, we're going to get into the types of color separations or the types of colors that we're going to be working with. A very basic understanding for the types or ways in which we can reproduce color in screen printing. And we can really break that down into some simple terms, and those being solid colors, tints, or blended colors. Really three different things you want to be looking at. We know in screen printing that what we do is we have these screens and we create a stencil or we burn the screen or expose it and then we just with a squeegee push the ink across the screen and down through the stencil onto our apparel or substrate reproducing the image. Well there's a couple of different things we want to be aware of when we're doing that. And we've got some different color models and I'll keep touching on these throughout the training series but we have you know our HSB, we have our and we'll let this zoom in here. We have CMY or CMYK, and these really come from blended colors. Then we have spot colors, and you can blend these also, and you can work with these as solids and tints. And typically where you're doing the blending is where you have tints. Now, understanding how these different color models work is going to be very important. We'll get into more of that later. But for now, we just want to look at the basics or the fundamentals. And to start out, we'll just look at a couple of different types of color here, just to give you understanding, especially if you're new and we'll go ahead and zoom in here. Now here I have on my screen some different representations of color. Here I have a blended or overprinted color. In this process we use two colors blended together to create the illusion of another color. Here I can move this vector object. It has a Pantone fill of 33 percent or a density. This would be printed as a half tone of the red. And here I've got the yellow. Here again 56 percent. This would be printed as a half tone and the result would be this orangish flesh color here in the middle when they were printed on top of each other and that's represented here with these two half tones. You can see here's the red, here's the yellow. Now the way Corel renders these in the digital color space is not very good so I took this and I just converted the graphic to an RGB bitmap, gave it a blur and we can see the color there. Now I'll come down here and we'll take a look at this Pantone color. Now this is a Pantone color, this is a solid color, it's not blended and I can print this without any half tones, it would just be pure black wouldn't have any dots and then beneath that I have a tint of another color that's represented right here as RGB and this is a percentage or a value of this darker shade to create the look of this lighter shade and this would be referred to as a tint well how do these all work? take it down to the fundamentals of half tones and I want to zoom this out here and then I've got a lot of objects in this graphic so it moves a little bit slow here but we can see here that we have a grayscale of black and white color going from 100 percent black which would be solid down to zero which would have no dots or half tones and then here are half tones here and this has been converted to an RGB and had some blur on it so we can see that the illusion of the color is created or the tint is created through the density of half tone dots down here at 20 percent we can see our dots are very small. As you go up through the density of the color, the dots become larger. Now everything that we do in screen printing is really going to revolve around solid colors, half tones, which are dots, and also blends or tints. Now looking at that, we've got a couple of different things we want to be aware of when we're dealing with our projects in Corel Draw. First of all, what are we dealing with? Here I've got a simple lumberjack football mascot design just for demonstrative purposes. This version here is in vector, this version here is an RGB bitmap. And we'll have to approach these very differently in how we work with them and color separate them and manage them. Here we'll take a look at the lumberjack and I'm going to go to my simple steps here and I've got everything selected here. I'll go to color management and click on create selection palette. And I'm going to go click off show color names here just so we can see this. I'll instantly see that I have 16 colors and 16 tints. Well, I can't screen print with that because I've only got four or six colors on my press. I'm going to have to bring that down. The benefits of simple steps are that it's very powerful for color management with any object in Corel Draw that can have a spot color or tint associated with it. For example, I can take this graphic and I just select a white, I'll select a red, a brown, a golden yellow, and a black. I've selected five colors. What that's going to do now when I click one-click conversion is going to change it to solids and tints of those colors. And now I could print this on a white garment with just four colors. Because I've got five here, I wouldn't print the white, and I've got 13 tints. Now if I click show color names, you can see what I've got here in the red. I've got 100%, which would be solid. 
and then I've got my tints and we can take a look at that here in the halftones. I'll zoom back out here and here I would have with these tints and I'll go ahead and just right click and make this a red and here I would have a tint of 50 percent and down here would be another tint in here right around the 20 25 percent and that's what would be used to recreate the look of the simulated color without blending working with just tints and I've got a spot color down here and you can see this would be 16 colors it would be just too much for a press we couldn't just print all this as solid color but we want to have the color representation in our reproduction of the graphic and screen printing and then down here beneath that I've got solid spot colors and tints no blending and here's the graphic set up and we'll just go ahead and take this apart as half tones and you can see how they're blending together to create the illusion of the different colors through tints the flesh tones and the browns as opposed to working with just the solids very important information especially for those of you who are just getting started and understanding how to print with spot colors and tints. Now beneath that I have an overprinted design. Now the overprinting we manage with our simple seps overprint. And that's the raster. I want to get the overprint here. And here I can take a couple of colors, say red, yellow, and black, and create what we call an overprinting palette. And I've got one of these here. And we get all of the different tints and shades that are available through just the colors of red, yellow, and black. And you can see there's a lot of different color available here. Well, this is very, very important as a screen printer because very often we're printing with a limited number of colors, say two or three or four spot colors. Well, we want to be able to get as much color as we can out of the limited number of colors we're working and printing with. Now, if you understand these things and your competition doesn't, you're going to be at a very distinct advantage because if you're working with a three-color job, such as, say, it's got red, yellow, and black, you can get out of that all of these different colors while well, the guy down the street who doesn't overstand overprinting in color can't do that. You can also take jobs and look at them and analyze them. If a job comes in and has black, orange, red, yellow, flesh in it, you will realize that you can recreate that with three colors as opposed to trying to do it with five or six different spot colors, giving you another advantage in the bidding process. And here I have one of these designs set up as an overprint, and this is a lot of blending. We're blending tints and shades here in the design. And we'll take a look at this. Here it is set up. And here we've got our half tones. And I'll just post part. There's your black. There's your red. And here's your yellow. And then these come out to look like this when they've been screen printed. Because you're blending for the oranges and the flesh tones. And in Corel Draw, how that works really, I'm going to go ahead and select on group here and we can see how this works. Just like we saw in that object. Here we've got the color red as a tint and the color yellow here blending together to create the illusion of our brown. So we can see that working with overprinting we're able to print jobs that look like they have a lot of color when actually they don't. Now that you think about this it goes back even to the CMYK and we'll get into more of that later but just like through CMYK you can get a spectrum of color. Any colors that you're working with you can get different colors and tints out of them. So you can make all spot color jobs look like they have depth and highlighting or shading. Down here I've got what would be the bitmap image of the actual lumberjack separated to monochromes bitmaps and these also can support spot colors and this is a three color separation and for that we use our simple seps raster. So we have a complete set of tools here from advancedtshirts.com relating to any type of color separation or reproduction that you're going to want to do in the design process and in the printing process for screen printing from our raster to our simple seps to our overprint and they're all named simple seps you've got simple seps overprint simple seps raster and then you've got simple seps 3 with smart rip which generates your halftones and here's the halftones of that color separation and then here's the color separation simulated or I took it and converted it to a RGB bitmap and added some blur to it to simulate what it would look like as a screen print so understanding the basics of working with spot colors tints, shades of color, and blending those together, and how even with just a few colors you can get designs that look photorealistic or multicolored because we've got a number of different graphics up here, but you can see here's a two-color graphic, but yet this does not look like clip art. And you want to be aware of this. If you're able to print like this with two colors and the guy down the street's doing clip arty stuff, you're going to have a huge advantage. Being able to reproduce even jobs like these, and these are all separated with simple steps raster and printed by some of our clients and customers. 
we make the process very easy. So understanding the basics of how to reproduce our color coming out of digital space, working with the Simple Steps products from Advanced T-Shirts and Corel Draw. We'll go ahead and wrap here, and we'll continue in our next session.